morning guys welcome to the channel um, we have a special treat for you guys today a special treat we're gonna be installing a aftermarket head unit on the Forester I've been waiting a couple days to do this video it's just been so hot and humid and we've been getting rain off and on so what I want to do is get rid of the uh, vintage cassette player and we want to put in a beautiful sony head unit the three set of tools that i would recommend for this is you know just your regular flathead screwdriver phillips head screwdriver and trim removal kit um, if you don't have a trim removal kit you could just use the flathead which is fine you know that works for me usually 90 percent of the time oh I took these plastic caps off to get to the two Phillips heads right here. So just as I predicted, you actually don't need to take out the three Phillips screws in the armrest. You could just pop the first trim out, which I have here, and then this will pop out. Um, what I would recommend is car to accessory and then move the gear shifter and then you'll be able to remove this trim all right once you remove that trim you can just pull on you can just pull on this or use your trim tool to pry it back and then it will just come out just like this all right after pulling the trim back you're met with these three connectors here this one i believe is for a light that goes by the ashtray um, this is for the cigarette lighter and I believe this is a ground so then once we take these three off we'll be able to clear this space and then there's the four screws on the side of the radio we'll pull that out and then we'll get the radio um, completely disconnected once the four screws are out on the on two on each side you'll be able to just pull the radio out just like that Make sure to put the screws somewhere safe. There's a connector for the antenna and there's another connector for the radio. So I'm gonna pull those out, get the radio out, bring out the new radio with the harness. What a beautiful head unit, guys. That vintage cassette player. This is, and it's still fully functioning. Definitely something I'm gonna store away for years to come. Guys, look at the beautiful doubled in Sony head unit. What a beauty. What a beauty. Um, from what it looks like, this is the Sony, if it will focus, it's the Sony XAV AX5000. So I'll put the link in the description for that. Bought this off Crutchfield like two years ago. Um, I really love it. Comes with uh, Apple CarPlay. Um, you can also hook up, I believe it's satellite radio, GPS. It is really good, guys. Really good head unit. So something I would like to highlight: this connector here is the Metra uh, 70 8901. Without this, you cannot hook up an aftermarket stereo. Um, I was looking online, not a lot of videos actually talk about this. This side of the harness comes with the Sony head unit um, and you essentially have to strip the cables. Um, I'll put some pictures of me doing this. Uh, you have to strip the cables and they're all color coded so you can't really get it wrong just take your time make sure the connections are solid and then you'll be able to make this harness um it's simple as that if you're not electronically savvy maybe get a friend that can that knows how to work electrical i mean it's it's really basic um what I found helpful is just looking up a wiring diagram. I mean, you can connect these. It's pretty straightforward and intuitive. But if you are curious what um, what the color cables mean, you can actually 
just uh, you can look at the link in the uh, description and you'll see a picture of um, what each cable color what does it mean this side of the harness actually plugs directly into the car harness and the other side plugs into the radio and just like that guys we got power baby we got power all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run through these uh, I'm gonna try to hook up the uh, car play and see how everything goes see if the Bluetooth works and then I'll get back to you guys all right guys so we got everything connected carplay works bluetooth works it bumps yo i'm excited guys carplay in 2002 yo we out here guys we out here the bracket on the side lines up just like that it has some sliders in case you know you want to adjust it but you won't need to you just make sure that everything goes where it goes and then we're good to go guys we're good to go hey guys so i forgot to mention this radio comes with two usbs this usb is for updating the head unit so what i'm gonna do is the head unit's not fully bolted on i just want to see how it's gonna sit I'm gonna route this to the glove box so that I can make sure that in the future if there is a new UI that comes out for this head unit I can install it so I'm gonna run that and then this one um, I'm gonna run by the gear shifter and I'm gonna leave the Apple cable attached I'm thinking I might drill a small hole so I can fish so I can fish the head of this through so that you don't have to keep plugging and unplugging. You just you just connect the uh, lightning cable in the glove box and then you're good to go. Um, you know, uh, iPhone fits comfortably in here. So I would recommend routing it underneath that trim there. Because once you put the, the front face plate on, there's not going to be any space to route that so you need to route it underneath the uh, plastic here where near the screws I just ran it in that left corner right there so the hole has been drilled cable has been passed through I ended up using a I ended up using a 3 8 bit for this job um, so if you want a, a little bit tighter, 5 16ths will work. Um, so I got the head unit mocked up right now. I routed that cable. So now I have to route the uh, update port, this USB port. And I also have to route the mic. Same location as the Subaru, um, optimal location. So we're going to do that. And same way as last time so we'll pass it underneath the dash and i think i have to go underneath here and then go up because we don't have the uh detachable uh piece on the side but i do i do believe i can remove part of the trim so let's see how that goes look underneath that here there's a little gap so that's gonna help us a lot because we're gonna take the cable we're gonna move it all the way across and then we'll be able to connect it to the radio and then on the other side we're just gonna leave the cable in that general area and then if we ever need it we'll pull it out uh, if we have to update the ui all the cables are where i want it unit is powered on um, so now we're just gonna put back all the trim and then we'll be good to go. So all the trim is back. Look how clean this looks, guys. Definitely adds a little bit of modern into the, uh, you know, the vintage, the classic um, interior. The mic is held up here. It is a little bit flimsy, so I might actually take some 3M tape or I might tuck something in here to try to get it to to stay but for right now it's good um, I would say the hardest part about this is 
the wiring, um, just making sure that you're patient. So I, I actually did this last night while I was uh, making dinner, just, you know, while I had some time, just stripping the wires and splicing everything. Um, the other thing I want to address is this cable management. Um, don't want this hanging down because it's going to get ripped out. So I'm going to I'm going to reach back here. Uh, I found some couple of uh, zip tie points. So I'm going to go grab some zip ties and handle that. Well, it's about that time, guys. Uh, the sun is high. It is extremely hot. And luckily, we did finish our install. So, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Sorry, we let the car pass. I want to thank you guys for tuning in, watching this content. Um, really, really exciting install. I really enjoy this head unit and the car. Um, massive difference in sound. Love it. I love this Sony head unit in the WRX, and I love it even more in this uh, Forester. Thank you. And guys, remember, every journey is different. See you guys.